for worship. Mm. And can you give us a call to worship? Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not prepared. Okay. Well, you're not. No, <laughs> I'm not. We are. <laughs> uh, I am not prepared. Where am I? <clears throat> You're not the only one. Yeah. yeah. So welcome everyone to worship. Welcome all you folks on Zoom. We're happy you're here. Um, and I have asked Bonnie to lead us in all of our liturgies are online today. That's the plan. <laughs> so I've asked Bonnie to lead us in the call to worship. Christ the King is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Let us Let approach him, him in humility and confidence as God's, God's sons, sons and daughters. And daughters. And I have asked Kevin to lead us in our mission statement. Let us say our mission statement together. We have it on screen, please, Bonnie. Yes, I'm sorry. We're good. Prayer of adoration. All right. Uh, can I guess the prayer of adoration? It's not in yeah. here. Okay, we'll get that in a second. Um, let's read our mission statement together. You come, come to the fellowship. fellowship. Is our original verse our community and power by the Bible and power by the Holy Spirit and motivated? Uh oh, we lost audio. I don't know. Go ahead and lead us, Kevin. We'll mute so that there's not that back and forth in response to God. God's love. We are called, we are called to, to the disciples, to faithfully serve, to encourage the seekers, to join the commitment, and, and to call all to worship, worship our Lord, our Lord, 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 and I have asked Shalanda to open us with a prayer of adoration. Good morning. Good morning. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. And the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. So our opening hymn is All Creatures of Our God and King. And I'm going to recommend we mute us for sure, but we all stand up and sing. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. Righteous God, you have crowned Jesus Christ as Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him and are slow to acknowledge his rule. We give allegiance to the powers of this world and fail to be governed by justice and love. In your mercy, forgive us. Raise us to acclaim as ruler of all, that we may be loyal ambassadors, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Amen. Amen. All, please hear the good news and see the grace of God. You are forgiven. We are forgiven. We are to go and live in the light of love. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I invite all those on Zoom now to unmute themselves as we extend God's grace to one another and share the peace we have been given by greeting each other with the words, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. Also with you. Peace and also of Christ, with you. everyone. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ to you. Kevin, you're looking great. Yeah. You doing okay? Oh, you're muted. Yes, sir. Great. Peace of Christ, Robert. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, Peace. Peace of Christ. Peace. Peace of Christ to you. Peace. 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 Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Our Old Testament lesson comes to us this morning from First Kings, chapter 21, verses 17 through 19. Let us pray that God opens our heart to hear what we are to hear this day. Amen. <coughs> then the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Go down to meet King Ahab of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He is now in the vineyard of Naboth, where he has gone to take possession. You shall say to him, thus says the Lord, have you killed and also taken possession? You shall say to him, thus says the Lord. In the place where dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, dogs will also lick up your blood. Holy wisdom, holy word. And our New Testament lesson is the Christ hymn from Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. O oh Lord, uphold me that I may uplift thee. So I spent the past, the first part of this week, in Georgia with my mom. And uh, on Friday, when I was bringing her home to the uh, retirement center where she lives, I ran into my sixth grade teacher, Miss McFarland. Wonderful, wonderful lady. She lives in the same building and she recognized me after I said who I was. So 
said, hello, Ellis. <laughs> she said, she said, you'll never believe this, but I just ran across an old assignment that I gave your class in 1976. I asked all the students to go home and find an example of the good news in the newspaper. And you all brought them back and I made a big collage. Now, this caught my attention since I'm preaching on the good news today. Now, I'm thinking, what did I have in mind as a sixth grader about the good news? And I said, I said, is this something I can take a look at? She said, sure, now come on up. So we went up to her apartment and she rustled rustle around and pulls out this giant poster. And Bonnie, I took a picture of it, so Bonnie, you can show it to us. <laughs> There it is. Um, who says there's no good news in the newspaper? Bold letters. And then there are all these collages and they're good. There's some there's a worker saving polar bears. There's the unsung hero paper boy. Grandson of slave purchased the plantation where his grandfather was enslaved. A woman fosters a hundred children. Now that's some pretty good news. But I was a little disappointed that I didn't come up with something about Jesus. So then I looked really hard and I discovered something important. Here, the next slide. It wasn't me. It was my brother, Rich. Uh. <laughs> that little heathen didn't come up with anything. <laughs> but I'm sure I would have come up with something. something. Well, maybe I would have, and maybe I wouldn't have. But the good news is kind of hard to wrap your head around. So what is the good news? Now, this, this seems like a simple enough question, right? The good news is that Jesus Christ died for our sins, and if we believe in him, we go to heaven. My church of origin, growing up, had the same assurance of pardon every Sunday. Here, believe the good news, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. But I've always had this suspicion that that wasn't all there was to it. See, the way I understand it, Jesus has always been focused on other people. He didn't die for himself, right? He died for us, for other people. And we're supposed to follow in Jesus' footsteps. So it never made sense to me that the good news was about me, even if it's a large collection of memes. Right? I don't trust this me, me, me Christianity. But recently, I read this book. It's called Salvation by Allegiance Alone. Um, it's by this guy named uh, Reverend Dr. Bates, right? Um, he's nobody, but he's this genius book. And he explains it a little differently, a little bigger. That the good news is actually better than what we usually say. But I know that I can't say the good news is not that we're saving Christ because that would get us into Facebook and it would go viral and I get in trouble for being heathen. And so I'm not going to say that's not the good news. But today we're going to talk, we're going to talk about the better news. And that's the title of the sermon, the better news. And here it is. If you only remember one sentence from this sermon, remember this one. The better news is that Jesus Christ is the king of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ is the king of heaven and earth. And our New Testament lesson makes that quite clear. Now, wonderful things flow from the kingship of Christ. And first, and this is the one we always think about, is that the king has the authority to pardon his subjects, right? Pardon us from our transgressions. But the second is, since Christ is the king, we know we aren't the king. And in fact, none of our other worldly leaders are the king. Third, the king knows us by name. The king of the universe knows us. And finally, because Christ is king of heaven and earth, he is everyone's king, not just the king of Christians. 
So that's the thing. Those are things we're going to talk about today. Now, this reading comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians. It was the last letter he wrote that we know of. He wrote it from prison in Rome while he was awaiting martyrdom. But this particular section, he didn't write. And everyone is suspicious there's stuff in the Bible that the authors didn't write. But this was not put in by some scribe 100 years later. This was actually written earlier. Right? This is Paul quoting a hymn that had already been accepted in the Christian community. So this particular piece of text was likely written sometime between 40 and 50 AD, like 15 years after the crucifixion. And this is hot off the press stuff. And this is how the earliest Christians understood the good news. And notice it doesn't say anything about Christ forgiving our sins. It's better than that. Listen to how it ends in verse nine. <clears throat> therefore, God, therefore God exalted him, being Jesus, even more highly and gave him the name that's above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee should bend on heaven and on earth and under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is <laughs> Lord to the glory of God the Father. In other words, Jesus is king. And this is so fundamental about our faith that we tend to just incorporate into his name, right? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Christ, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, long-awaited, righteous king. Now, we don't focus on that too much around here for a variety of historical reasons, because words like king and lord and master they are a little problematic in North America. So we tend to focus on Christ as Savior. Savior doesn't have these sort of bad associations from history. So didn't the earliest Christians think of Jesus as Savior? Well, of course they did. The Christ hymn doesn't mention it because that would be redundant. Everyone knows that the king has the authority to pardon his subjects. And that's what being saved right, saved means, right? At the end of time, we go before the king and he pardons us for our sins. That's salvation. This is the cosmic version of the US president pardoning someone for a federal offense. It's just one of those things presidents do and everyone knows it. So writing Jesus is the king who can pardon our sins is a lot like saying Jimmy is the policeman who can arrest us. I mean, of course you can. That's just what police do. So we're not going to focus too much on that. We, we know a lot about salvation. We often fail to realize that since Christ is the king, we know that Joe Biden is not the king. And Putin is not the king. And neither is Charles. Except he is. So this is a little confusing. As the king of heaven and earth, Christ has ordained human government for the righteous ordering of society. Right? Anarchy, bad. Righteous order in society, good. And governments on earth take a variety of shapes, right? Monarchy, democracy, kleptocracy, others. So Charles is the king of England, much like Herod was the king of Judah, even though Caesar was the king of everything, the king of kings. We call Herod a client king. In the same way, Charles and Biden and Putin they have their positions in government, and Christ is the king who reigns above them, whether they like it or not. And this has really important implications for us. It makes politics less important, and it makes politics more important. See, it's less important because we know it is not ultimate. The 2024 election cycle is starting to heat up already. It won't be long before we're just inundated by polls and political ads and scandals, debates. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I tend to get really wrapped up in that kind of stuff. In fact, if there were a debate on Sunday morning, I might be tempted to skip church to watch it. <laughs> but that is backwards because it's forgetting that Christ is the king. Focusing on that kingship helps me remember that human politics, while they're important, are not ultimately important. On the other hand, 
Christ's kingship also makes government more important to Christians because Christ expects humans to govern the earth in a righteous way. I'm pretty sure Christ does not condone the fact that in the U.S., one out of every three African-American boys can expect to go to jail. I suppose our government does a lot of things that Christ doesn't like. So what do we do about it? Well, this morning we saw Elijah going after King Ahab. Now, I won't go down the rabbit hole of First Kings and all what that was about. The point is just that God sent the prophet to say to Ahab, you have done wrong, and God is not happy. Christ allows us to protest unrighteous government actions. And when we do that, we're fulfilling a prophetic role. Now, that's not the same thing as saying the United States is a Christian nation. And it's really important. Saying we're a Christian nation, that's dangerous ground. We're a democracy. Well, we get to vote as Christians. Right? And if we, the Christians, are outvoted by people with a different opinion, they win, we lose, and that's fine. I'll take democracy over theocracy any day, even a Christian theocracy. Now, Christ doesn't call everyone to be prophets. Right? You're not sinning if you choose to stay home instead of going to the march. Some of us have more Martin Luther King in us than others. And that's fine. And I also want to say that no one gets to tell us what righteousness looks like, right? We get to study scripture and history and science and our own consciousness and whatever else, right? And decide for ourselves what is pleasing to Christ and what isn't. And if other people, especially if other Christians, come to a different conclusion, I hope we don't just call them names, right? But I hope we can use this as an opportunity to sit down and talk to them and get to know them and study with them, and then find what are the roots of our disagreement. Is it just vocabulary? Is it a different weighting of scripture? You know, how do these faithful people come to different opinions, even opinions that we find hateful? So another consequence of Jesus being king is that he knows us and loves us. So 10 or 15 years ago, Lucy and I rode in an elevator with Joe Biden. Honestly, I had no idea who he was. Of course, Lucy did. She told me. And I said something profound like, Senator, thank you for working so hard for the American people. And I shook his hand. Right? That's as close as I will ever get to the President of the United States. Right? I talk to Jesus every day, multiple times throughout the day. And I hope, I hope you do too. And if you don't, I suggest you try it. Jesus knows us. He loves us. He encourages us. Occasionally, we receive, we receive insights that we think might be from him. And that's dangerous because it could be wrong. But we could be right. And I, um, I hope, I'm thinking maybe I'll preach about that next week. But the point is that we're all involved in a loving relationship with the king of the earth. The king who cares for us individually, personally. And I hope that feels as good to y'all as it feels to me. Now for my next point, we have a little video. And... Uh, is our is our example. Lucy, could you play that video for us? Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the video. laughs> Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie. <laughs> we know that Arthur's the king. They know, but we know that everyone in Britain was subject to the king, right? Whether you know who the king is or not doesn't matter. Whether you accept who the king is or not doesn't matter. And this is also true of Jesus. His name is above every name, believers and non-believers alike. Jesus is the king of everyone on earth. And that means there is no such thing as a foreigner. When Jesus, uh, there's no such thing as a foreigner. We're, we're all fellow subjects. Everyone is a fellow subject of Jesus the king, know it or not. When he ascended to heaven and was enthroned on the right hand of God, the word enemy should have left our language. Now, it hasn't, of course. But we can all try to eliminate it from our own personal vocabulary. 
regardless who is Jesus has appointed to govern any particular part of the earth, we are all citizens of the same kingdom. So as we've talked about, Jesus' kingship affects us in many different ways. We've talked about a couple this morning. He pardons us for our sins. He reigns over all the earthly leaders. And he expects them to govern righteously. And we are within our rights to urge them to do that. And although we aren't a Christian nation, we, ha- we are entitled to vote according to our Christian beliefs. We have the king's ear, and finally, since Jesus is the king of heaven and earth, and everyone on earth, whether they know it or not, there's no such thing as a foreigner. So that's a lot for one sermon. If you only remember one sentence, let it be this one. The better news is that Jesus Christ is the Lord of heaven and earth. In the name of the Father, the King, and the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. And amen. Hey, Bonnie, why don't we skip Kanye this morning since we're a little behind? I brought Kanye in, but we may need to him next week. Um, I asked Brianna to lead us in saying what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Let us say what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ says, those who believe in me will never hunger, and they will never thirst. So I invite everyone at home to take whatever you have on hand, um, you know, bread and wine or saltines and Coca-Cola, whatever you've got, and we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Let us pray. Gracious God. We thank you for creating the world out of nothing, forming the earth and us, all the people in it. We thank you for calling us to be a people when we were not a people. And we thank you for being faithful to us, even when we weren't faithful to you. We thank you that in the fullness of time, you sent our son, your son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, to live among us, to teach us what it is like to be truly high for us, to be raised for us, to ascend to heaven for us and to reign in glory above us. Lord, we ask that as we have these elements that will help make us the body and blood of the world. When, when Jesus gathered together with his disciples on the very last night, he has a chance to say the very last the thing they would remember the most. And he did not give them a theology lecture. He gave them a meal. He took the loaf, and after blessing it, he broke it. He said, this is God's body. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup, this cup is the new covenant 
feel in my blood. Shed it for everyone. For the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. Our custom is to take communion by intention because everyone gets up and takes a little piece of bread and dips it into the cup and receives the element that way. Um, there are some gluten-free crackers around somewhere. If you're gluten intolerant, I'm sure we can find them. Um, and um, come for all is ready. This is great. Is Christ's body broken for you? you for feeding us the spiritual food. Help us to remember that you are as present with us as this bread and this wine. It is in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Um, it is always our honor to talk to people about Jesus. If you have questions about your faith, like you know more, or think what I said was ridiculous, or would just like to talk, come to know Jesus better, we would love, we have elders, we'd love to speak with you anytime. I'm available whenever. Pastor Trish is great. We're all, we're all ready to have that conversation. And it's an honor to do it. This is a moment where we have the opportunity to offer our gifts. 
um, our financial gifts, our talent, and our time. And we give online sometimes, and we write checks sometimes, we put money in the basket sometimes, but every time we pass the basket and touch it as a sign of our commitment to Christ. <laughs> I got to pick the hymns, so we're singing one of my favorites. Sing with me now, rise and sing with me now in Christ alone. Or the doxology. Yeah. Right. Bonnie, do you have the recording? No. Yeah, I'm I'm trying, but it's not. Uh, let me try one more time. Okay, we'll do it a cappella. You ready? Praise God from moon while blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. <laughs> Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay. Now can we sing in Christ alone? Yeah. No, no, no. It's good. We got a, we have a video and everything. Mapiella so long. <laughs> we don't want that. We would have to beg forgiveness for that. Um, we can sit down with them. No, we. Uh, I'll, we'll I'll stand. stand. Okay. Um, we have a congressional. Congressional <laughs> congregational meeting um, after as part of church next week, um, we will receive the budget for the upcoming year and answer any questions folks might have. Um, we have a session meeting this Thursday at 630. Um, it's a hybrid meeting and our session um we'll be getting together to go through an agenda um but i do want to say that our session meetings are open to all of the congregation so i'll send out a link and then february 19th sally watson is preaching um she is a wonderful preacher she is in charge of mission presbytery which is the regional organization um, that it, our church is a part of and um, you know they're involved with lots of other things um, and then one more thing and then Sally Watson that day will actually be doing an elder training too so that's all I have right now thank you I've got one more which is the session has asked me to teach a class on Presbyterianism kind of mm -hmm. basics 101 um, which I would love to do if anyone is interested, and uh, if so, please let me know. Um, I'm thinking about uh, maybe after church with something to eat uh, the first two Sundays in March, um, if that's if people ordain for that. Um, so just let me know, and um, it'll be fun. We'll have a good time. So anything else? Any other announcements? Is it two? Two we can make it longer if you want. No, I'm really. I, I, can, <laughs> I think two minutes is good. Okay, just. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean. Yeah. Like we could do, you know. We, <laughs> no, you don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> probably two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not enough, we'll do a little more. But yeah. uh, I think we can probably get through. Yeah. Um. So we have moved the post lute and the benediction to the end service, thinking that prayer and praise is still a part of our worship service. 
Um, but this is the time that we turn off the recording. 